So today at Engineer.com, we're visiting Jigsaw Renaissance in Seattle, Washington. And this is Booty, one of the board members who will be Hi. our guide. Yeah, welcome to Jigsaw Renaissance. So, yeah, so basically at Jigsaw Renaissance, we are uh, learning and making community. And we try to uh, convert people from do it yourself to do it with others. Okay. Yeah, and it's a, a part of the uh, uh, school factory. And that's where we get the uh, nonprofit from. Okay, yeah. so you're a nonprofit org. Yeah, we are nonprofit organizations, and we are a, a community of uh, people who want to learn or people who want to teach. But we also inside the inter international districts. Okay. And uh, we are in the art building, so we are part of the art uh, community as well. Okay. And other than that, uh, we also hosted a lot of meetups. Uh, and so inside of our own uh, community, we also have different communities. Uh, one of them is the Earthship uh, they, they Meetup. Okay. They recycle uh, this uh, tire, old tires, and then use it for the building materials. And the other one will be the, the My Little Pony uh, Meetups. Uh, we got the DIY Internet of Things Meetups. We got the Leather uh, Working Meetups. Uh, we got the Arduino Meetup. Um, and uh, RC meetup. Mm -hmm. So a lot of meetups that um, around here that don't have some space, uh, we invite them to use our space. Yeah. And uh, if you go check out our website, it'll tell you whether or not our space is open. It's uh, called Jig Twitch. It has uh, some uh, Arduino inside, and it talk to the internet. And then I want to tell you about this one. It's just an uh, Arduino learning library. It actually uh, gather a lot of uh, a hardware and electronics so that uh, that they're being donated by a member or people who know about it. And then they got the thousand uh, dollar from awesome uh, foundations. Okay. Uh, to buy electronics for people to check out, actually. Okay. So, so it's a lending library for components. That's correct. Yes, because uh, hardware packing is really expensive. Right. Yeah, and uh, individual sensor, if you buy them, that's just like a hundred dollars. Yeah, and then Alan here. Alan uh, has a cell radio control meetup, and can you tell me more about it? Well, we do everything radio controlled and remote controlled, and our focus is really on the designing of new product to help the global radio control right. community. Yeah. Well, I, I got started in radio control through puppetry. And specifically, I uh, designed uh, what was called the Red Dragon for use at children's hospitals and whatnot to cheer kids up that are ill. And I'm designing a new one here with a state of, more state of the art. The controller that will be in it will actually allow me to focus the head of the dragon towards the kid once and then I can let go of the controls and concentrate on the voice software. It will automatically track the kid so if the parent is doing any kind of moving around the neck of the dragon and whatnot will will keep the head focused on the child. Right. And there's three cameras, there's one for the regular eyes, one facing back at the parent and then one in the mouth. Yeah. And then, uh Michael Park is actually a volunteer for the Bridge Radio. Maybe you can tell me more about you yourself. And tell us what you're working on. Ah, yeah. uh, well, looks like you got a robot there. Uh, yes. Um, in September, the Seattle Robotics Society will be holding their semi almost annual uh, Robothon and kind of build a little robot to compete in two events line maze and line following, so I um, bought this little one-dimensional camera that I'm going to use, hopefully, to follow a line on the course, and the robot will follow the line with any luck. <laughs> well, this is a, it started out life as a little binary trainer for kids that you would uh, put in a, enter a binary number and it would immediately convert it to decimal, so you could Hopefully, learn a little bit about binary numbers that way. Right away. Yeah, I'm Kevin Moyling. Kevin I'm a partner with Ben Dobbins. Ben Dobbins is currently in Indianapolis uh, promoting the launch of our new film, Hands of Fate. Well, Zombie Earth Entertainment is an independent film production company, and Fan Support Network is a support crew to help people make independent films, independent music, writers, illustrators, 
uh, we provide a lot of the back-end logistics services for uh, helping the creator do something with what they've created. Mm -hmm. uh, Zombie Earth Entertainment, of course, we're, we make Journey Quest Season 2, which is a web series. Uh, we're well known for Darkness Rising, which was one of our uh, uh, cult classics about five years ago. The sequel for that launched yesterday. Uh, we're currently out at Gen Con in Indianapolis, as I said before. This is our order fulfillment uh, facility. Uh, this is where a lot of the boxes of our products, the products of the members of the Fan Supportive Network, musicians, filmmakers, a couple people from Canada, Chicago, all over the country. Um, and we also do a lot of Kickstarter campaign fulfillment from here. That's actually one of the biggest things we do is running Kickstarter campaigns. This is also one of our color correction stations and editing stations. We do a lot of our filmmaking here. We use this space actually for our meetings. We have production meetings here. We have a green screen in the other room. We use for some for our uh, regular news program, uh, which is called Rude Mechanical, which is actually a lot of fun. We did a Kickstarter workshop here last month that was for the Kickstarter meetup. Uh, we'll be doing an actual full-on workshop where we're going to take people through the process of budgeting out and planning out their campaigns. We had a whole wall full of planning and notes for a little while while we were laying out the production schedule for the film. Uh, we would not be able to do that in a very small space that was only just ours. The, the fact that we can expand out and then fold back in occasionally makes this space far better for us than a dedicated office could, right. could be. None of us would be able to do this individually. Or we'd be very, very redundant. It'd be a lot of waste. So let me take you to uh, the next room. Just real quick here. So uh, this is a, a sort of a lounge area uh, for people to just chat and uh, rest a little bit. Uh, we got the uh, desk where people can use on up uh, to to do soldering and stuff. So like this that. is the uh, classroom uh, workshop area. Uh, last night we have uh, uh, people from Arduino meetups, and we will have around 30 to 40 uh, people for the uh, Raspberry Pi. Kevin um, actually mentioned about the green screen right there, yeah, in the back. And, uh, we, they actually use this room to do productions, and they have they built sets. And they have to tear them apart as, as soon as that shit are done because the space is not that big. So it'd be like a big giant uh, uh, sand warm monster with the big mandibles over there right. moving. And then uh, people use the tool room actually to do the costume change. We're not only working on electronics, we're also working on wood. Uh, we have a leather mask artist also a part of our uh, uh, members and we have a uh, for people who make a big giant kite for a uh, burning man i believe yeah right in the middle of structure yes okay. yeah. and, and this is a tool room and this is the tool room this is the tool room which is a work in progress we've got a lot of stuff that's been donated and one of our members is uh, building a frame for doing a CNC router, and you'll be leaving that here for the, the Renaissance people to use.